Cool no. Do no. you, you like it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to another day at Norpin's house. Today I am doing my first bread video for the month of October. I said I was gonna do soups and breads and we needed a few days off after our month of pies. If you missed it, we did a pie every day in September and it was so fun, but we needed a few days to recoup and get things done that we'd kind of put on the back burner and then we get got our oldest daughter Esther set off, sent off. She left to go be a missionary and finally, I'm able to now make this video. And I'm starting with one of my favorite bread recipes to make that I've kind of tweaked. It started with a recipe I found from the Elliott Homestead. It's a French bread recipe and it's super simple. And when I say super simple, you don't ever have to have made bread before and you can make ridiculously good French bread with this recipe. I tweaked it a bit so you don't have to weigh things just to make it a little bit easier for us in America where we don't typically weigh our ingredients. And I feel like it works really well at the ratios of water to flour and things that I have. I started this recipe yesterday. It's a recipe you start the day before. That's the hardest part, it's just the planning. But other than that, it's super simple. And now I'm gonna pull it out of the fridge and keep going. But I'll start with yesterday's and then I'll kind of walk you through um, to the finish line for today. I'm also gonna be making a really yummy pumpkin stew, but I'm gonna make that in a different video so that you can watch a video just about the bread and just about the soup. Um, but that's what we're gonna be having for dinner today is the amazing freshly baked French bread with our pumpkin stew. Okay, this really is the easiest recipe. Don't worry if you've never made bread before, I'm gonna walk you through it and you're gonna be so happy when you do it because it's really simple. I'm just gonna mix in with my hands. I'm adding agave here, but you can use honey. It just, it, agave is a little bit easier to store. It's a little bit cheaper and it's not quite as sticky. So I'm just using a fork here and mixing the dough around with my fork until it gets kind of incorporated and a little bit shaggy. And then I'm just gonna use my hands to push it together a little bit more while it's still in the bowl. Once I've done that, I'm gonna throw it out onto the counter and just knead it a few more times, like really simple. I'm actually just folding it in half, if you, as you can see here. I'm not doing the traditional knead, it's more just a stretch and fold. And then I let it rest for 15 minutes, and I do that again, just two or three, maybe four times, stretch and fold. And I put this back on, let it rest now for 30 minutes. Do it again, you'll see that the dough is starting to get you know, the gluten starting to develop and getting a little bit softer and smoother each time. And you're gonna let this rest four times um, doing the same thing um, for 30 minutes. So you, you're definitely, even though this recipe is easy, it does take a little bit of time. The last time you let it rest, you're gonna throw it into this oiled bowl, turning the dough over so it doesn't stick and it gets a little coating of olive oil all over it. You're gonna put some plastic wrap on it and you're gonna throw it in the fridge for 12 to 16 hours. Um, if you, the 16 hours is really best, that's where you're gonna develop a lot of that amazing flavor. So now it's the next day, I'm pulling it out of my bowl. It's nice to have a, a dough scraper and pulling that out onto the counter. It smells delicious already. I weigh mine because I'm dividing it into four loaves and I like them to be e fairly equal. Every time I think I can eyeball it well, I can't. <laughs> so I just make it easy on myself and make them all about the same. Okay, now we're gonna shape the dough into like these loaf shapes. This is not your final baguette shape. It's not really ready for that quite yet. You're just gonna divide it into four. And I do this roll and pinch technique and get them into a shape. It does make it easier on you on the next step if you make these as smooth and not misshapen as possible. Throw a tea towel over them, let them rest for an hour. Meanwhile, you're gonna throw a pan of water in the oven and preheat it to 500 degrees. After an hour, these should be quite elastic and really easy to shape into the baguettes. You can see I could just very easily stretch it out into its longer shape, the longer loaf. And I have a special pan the kids got me for Mother's Day a couple years ago. I put it on top of a cookie sheet. You can bake this just right on a cookie sheet or a pizza stone, bread stone, 
but I will put a link over on the side here so you can get that off Amazon because it does give it a really great crisp crust that you want out of a baguette. Let it rest for 30 more minutes and then once you're done with that rest, I like to sprinkle some flour on here. It's not necessary, I just think it's pretty. It makes it look like the classic French baguette. It is necessary though to score the bread that helps it rise. Um, and so you can do this in lots of different patterns, but this is a real pretty one. Stick it in the oven for 15 minutes, then lower the temperature to 450, take the water out, rotate it. 15 more minutes and your baguettes are done. It's really that simple. It's time consuming, but really not difficult. And then you get this amazing crust and it tastes just as good as the French bakeries. Has anyone had the bread? Yeah. I have had the bread. And what do you think about the bread? The bread is very good. It's soft, but crunchy on the outside. Really, it's not awesome. Awesome. It's it's like Ashley, you like the bread? I love the bread. Lars, what do you think about the bread? It's good bread. It's, it's good, good bread. Good bread. Okay. This is really good bread. The bread. Lars approved good bread. <laughs> Lars and Lex both like the bread. Better okay. than any store bread. And we, do you like it? Yes. So, okay. Okay, it really is very simple. It's not like a hard technique. And when it's time consuming, but you're not sitting with the dough that whole time. It's just like if you're watching a movie, you go in there and you stretch the dough and then you go back to your movie throughout the evening and then it's in the fridge overnight and a couple so hours before- You can before, do this and watch a movie at the same yeah, time? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's amazing. A couple <laughs> hours before dinner, you pull it out and you get it ready to go so that you can pull it out of the oven right when you're gonna be eating. And it's like life-changingly good. It's yeah. so good. I don't know if it was expressed very well in when we're all eating dinner because it's kind of crazy. That is that bread is amazing. It it's actually difficult to eat anything else with it because the bread sort of overshadows the other food. It's yeah. so good. One of my really. favorite things is every time we have guests, it's like each time, even though I've made it many times when we are we have like a family dinner on Sunday with extended family, they're like, You made this? I'm like, Yes. <laughs> they always think I bought it like some French bread bakery or something. You should so. be insulted by that every time someone says How that. How dare you? Angry. How dare you? <laughs> Of course I made it. No, it's delicious. It's super fun to make. And um, so I know like a lot of times bread can be scary, but this is a really easy bread and it doesn't take much and, but it pays in dividends because it's so delicious. So check out the link in the description to my recipe and also comment with any questions you might have or anything else that you noticed or wanted to add. Thanks guys. Until next time. Bye. Bye.